Hey Americans, do you realize how lucky we are here in the States? Literally anyone, regardless of their riding experience, can go get any motorcycle they want as their beginner motorcycle. Never even sat on a motorcycle? Here's a Turbo Busa for you. You might think that's a little bit too much bike for you, but you've got to remember, if you've got a built motor under 6,000 RPM, it's actually pretty docile. It's a perfect learning platform providing a mere 140-ish horsepower for you to play with. Or maybe you want to flex on all your rich buddies and their sports cars and you buy yourself a Panigale V4S. You would have gotten the R, but they didn't have it at your local dealership. You ride it once, then you post it on Craigslist with the line that you don't have any time to ride it anymore. All that is perfectly fine here, but pour one out for all of our friends across the pond. They need to start on meager 125s and 200s because the government said, hey, it's probably best if you don't splatter yourself into a bridge abutment the first time you go out for a ride or smash into a pedestrian. Sure, there's going to be a contingent of Darwinist American riders who say if you want to start on an expert bike, that's on you. But most riders who spent any reasonable seat time on a big bike will realize that a beginner shouldn't be allowed to start on a brand new leader bike. That just doesn't make sense. Another reason to start on little bikes is they're way cheaper and pretty much every bike on today's list is under five grand brand new. With that in mind, let's take a look at some of the best motorcycles you can get under 200 cc's and we even threw in a few 250s for giggles as well. The only problem with displacement that small is that you miss out on some of the best beginner bikes out there like our brand new CRF 300L that we're giving away. It's got plenty of power to have fun, lightweight and with a low seat height as far as dual sports are concerned. But if you're in the market for a beginner bike and you haven't considered this, you're doing yourself a disservice. But that's okay, I've got you covered. Use the code CRF to get 3x entries on every dollar you spend over at shop.yaminube.co. So whether you get yourself a piece of merch or a new set of tires, you'll get yourself triple entries to win. But I'll do you one better. Pick up any piece of luggage, tank bag, tail bag, saddle bags, and you'll get max entries to win for the month. That's a perfect head start to win this awesome bike. You can always head over to yamanoob.co as well, sign up, join our Discord, and see all the entries that you want to win right there as well. But let's think smaller and start with one for our Europeans out there. Before 2013, you could go up to a little under 15 horsepower, but now you can get bikes with a power to weight ratio of 0.13 horsepower per kilo, or at least that's what some light Googling told me. So with that in mind, our first bike is going to be the crop of Japanese 125s. You might think this is where I talk about the Grom, but nope, Yamaha has the R125, Cowie has the Ninja 125, and Suzuki has the Jixer 125. Believe it or not, homologated 125s don't differ a whole lot in terms of power, meaning that all the bikes are making 15 horsepower and 8 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, I know that's pretty rough when you consider that people in America are looking at an MT-07 and thinking it might not have enough power to pass on the highway. They're all right around 320 pounds, but Yamaha undercut the others with the wet weight of 313, meaning that it is the fastest. Not a big deal considering that they top out at 75 miles an hour. In terms of features, they have a throttle, front and rear brakes, on and off switch, and that's about it. But with this much power on tap, it is literally impossible to have it get away from you. But that's more or less the point. You're on one to learn the rules of the road and get the basic skills down. Then you move up to a more appropriate motorcycle. None of these bikes are available in the States, but at 4,900 British pounds for the R25, that's 6,645 US dollars, it's pretty outrageous expensive. Number two is one for the Indian audience out there. I mean the country and not the brand that we know here in America. Yeah, I see y'all chiming down there in the comments and I scoured the internet for one of the most popular bikes to pick up is the TVS Apache RTR 164V. Wow, that's a name almost as long as the Fireblade. It's the only bike on this list that sells itself as a race-ready naked bike. Eat your heart out, KTM. TVS is coming for the crown. It's also one of the only bikes in the segment that ships with switchable rider modes before you start thinking that it's stupid for a bike making 17 horsepower and 11 foot-pounds of torque to have adjustable power modes. It's actually changing the way the ABS behaves, which is kind of cool. It has urban mode where the ABS interrupts as you'd expect for a street bike, and then rain with maximum interruption and race with the least possible activation. However, if you're thinking about getting yourself one of these machines stateside, good luck because they are not available. That being said, if you could find one, it's pretty dang cheap at $1920. Now we mentioned KTM in the last one, so let's take a second to chat about the Duke 200. It's KTM's attempt to make the Duke 390 even more affordable. The 200 is packing a 199cc thumper putting down a mind-shattering 26 horsepower and 15 foot-pounds of torque, and somehow weighing in at more or less the same wet weight as the 390. 
Fully loaded, it's 360-ish pounds, but it's got a 43 millimeter WP Apex suspension, which is more than most bikes in the category have to offer. It's not adjustable, but hey, you've got switchable supermoto mode, which disables the rear wheel ABS, so you can skid the rear tire around. The thing that I don't understand is, well, what's the point? I understand that in other markets, the Duke 200 makes sense, but here stateside, it's pretty hopelessly outgunned. I suppose with a $3,999 price point, if you're thinking about buying a Grom, the 200 is just about better in every way and only $600 more for the pleasure. However, if you're looking for a good city starter bike, the 390 makes more sense in just about every way. The seat height is the same too, so it doesn't even make sense if you're looking for something more approachable. While the Duke 200 doesn't make a lot of sense, the Suzuki Van Van 200 does. It might look like it rolled straight out of the 70s, but mercifully it's got fuel injection and a disc brake up front. If you're thinking it's odd for me to be shouting out such basic features, that's because it doesn't have a whole lot else to offer. It's an air-cooled 199cc single, putting down 16 horsepower and 11 foot-pounds of torque. It'll get up to about 70 miles an hour, which is good because the rear brake is a drum brake. Doing 70 miles an hour on a van van sounds like death. That being said, Suzuki calls it their fun duro motorcycle, which is probably code for take it down a gravel road, maybe some twin track and call it a day. It's a bit of a farm bike. It's also $4,649, which is a bit much for such a simple motorcycle, but if you're looking for an alternative to the monkey, the van van has you covered. Unfortunately, Suzuki discontinued the van van last year, but you can still find them floating around with low miles. I mean, let's face it, not a lot of people are touring on their van vans. Number Number five technically has a displacement of zero cc since it's electric, which I guess means we could go ahead and slap every electric bike ever made on this list, but in the interest of fairness, we're going to use the CSC City Slicker. It's basically an electric Grom, same mini bike aesthetic, 12 inch tires and 30 inch seat height. However, despite being electric, it's lighter than the Grom, weighing in at only 216 pounds in running order. CSC calls it the City Slicker and that's for good reason. It's only capable of a top speed of 47 miles per hour and has a 20 to 50 mile range, depending on how ham-fisted you are with throttle. The motor is only rated at 3.2 kilowatts, which translated from nerd equates to 4.3 horsepower, but as a city bopper, you don't really need more, much more than that. Another bummer is that it takes six to eight hours to fully charge, though I suppose if all you're doing is commuting to and from the office, you can deal with the long charge time. But for all of its shortcomings, the CSC has is it's dirt cheap, coming in at only $2,795. If you're looking for a beater bike, you can treat with wanton abandon then get the CSC shipped to your door for 250 bucks more. Now while we didn't want to include Groms on this list it's tough to fill out a 10 bikes around 200 cc's without talking about the Honda 125 engine. It's basically in all their little bikes, the Grom, the Monkey, and most importantly for this list is the Trail 125. The Trail 125 is basically the modern incarnation of the farm bike. It's using the same 124cc air-cooled single, putting down all of 9 horsepower and 8 foot-pounds of torque. However, despite being comically underpowered, this bike has an absolutely rabid fan base. We've even got a few Trail 125 owners on the Discord, and they're probably watching this right now, smugly sipping from a tall glass of 125 supremacy, feeling the vindication that I'm finally talking about their bike. The Trail 125 is a weird bike to categorize because it's got a 4-speed semi-auto gearbox, so it's not exactly a twist and go, but it's small and it sits like a scooter. I guess it's what you would call an adventure scooter, but that seems a little too limiting for the Mighty 125. People have taken these bikes places you couldn't take a full-size adventure bikes, and like most Hondas, it won't complain or break down on you. If you're looking to get out and poke around some trails and don't have the cash for a dual sport or an ADV bike, then its cheap $3,899 price tag will probably be to your liking. The only problem is that when you own a Trail 125, you inevitably turn into some weird mini bike apologist that won't shut up about how great your bike slash scooter thing really is. The next bike on the list is the Grom Killer to the Kawasaki Z125. Did it kill the Grom? No, obviously not. Honda's still printing those things out like it's going out of style, but the Z125 is cheaper than the Grom, which is important important when you're talking about a bike that's designed to be as affordable as possible. Once again, the specs aren't much to write home about. A 125cc air-cooled thumper putting down a whole 8 horsepower and 7-ish foot-pounds of torque. One thing that does separate the Z125 from the Grom is that it takes a lot of its design cues from the bigger bikes in Kawasaki's lineup, or at least it did when it was first released. 
As a side note, I spent a lot of time looking into all these little bikes for this list and noticed they trend among articles to write with fine praise. In the case of the Z125, an article from Web Bike World says that the Z125 will likely turn the daily run into the office into an exhilarating little rip and you will likely not even find yourself exceeding the speed limit. That's a lot of words to say the bike is really slow and you're going to spend your entire ride at full throttle just to keep up with traffic. However, there are a lot of people who can really extract every ounce of fun out of these machines and I applaud that. And hey, it's only $3,299 which is super affordable for some mini bike fun. Now our last sub 200cc bike for the day is the mighty Yamaha TW200. It is the only bike on the list that's actually categorized as the dual sport, but I would consider it more of an all-terrain vehicle. There is no hill you can't climb, nor puddle you can't conquer. The T-Dub is basically an unkillable tractor from the 80s, but while bigger bikes like the KLR and other dual sports have gone through more modern iterations, the TW is still stuck firmly in the past. That's not all bad, mind you. The TW is putting down 16 horsepower and 11 foot-pounds of torque while weighing at 278 pounds. While it's heavier than the competition, its massive 180 section rear tire keeps it planted firmly on just about any surface. It's literally like an ATV tire, it's ridiculous. If you're talking to a friend who's nervous to try off-roading because of the tall seat heights of modern dual sports, see if you can get them on a T-Dub. As an intro into the world of off-road riding, you could do a whole lot worse. It's a bummer it's almost five grand, but you might be able to find them used at a more appropriate price. All right, let's unleash the beast with the whole extra 50 cc's and see what we can get. How about we start with little cruisers, the Yamaha V-Star 250. What can you expect from such a diminutive little bike? Well, it's not much more power, seeing as it can only manage 21 horsepower and 15 foot-pounds of torque, but it's the only motor on the list with a twin cylinder, which means a little less vibration and a little bit better sound. You'll likely see these little cruisers rolling around the range at your local MSF class thanks to the low seat height, and that's about it. If you come from a Harley house and pick up a V-Star 250, you might be getting for a quick disowning. Despite being $4,599 brand new, you can probably find these going for even cheaper because not a whole lot of folks are lining up to purchase a carved and air-cooled V-Twin. But if you do pick one up, it will last forever. Rounding out our list today is one more from CSC. It's the San Gabriel 250, another absolutely dirt cheap motorcycle costing only $2,495. And like the city slicker, you can have it shipped directly to your door. It's packing a 230cc air-cooled single, putting down 16 horsepower and 13 foot-pounds of Torgos, which is more than enough to get you around the city and for some light highway cruising, assuming you're not gonna go faster than about 70 miles an hour downhill with a tailwind. It's probably the best looking bike on the list, although I'm a sucker for the T-Dub, but if you're looking for a budget cafe bike, then this is the one for you. One weird thing is thumbing through CSC's website, they advertise the bike as being easy to work on with long service intervals and online tutorials for how to do the work. Now, that can be good or bad. If you want a bike to dick around with or maybe learn how to do some basic maintenance or step up into the bigger jobs, then this is a great platform to learn on. But the flip side is if you're not comfortable with wrenching on a motorcycle and there's no dealer support to get the work done. But hey, what do you want for 2,500 bucks? Fact. The Truman Show delusion is a mental condition marked by a patient's belief that they are the star of an imaginary reality TV show. Goodbye. Hey! Great seeing you here. Didn't think I'd see you back at the end of another Yammy Noob video. Yes, this video is actually over, but if you hit this link over here, you can keep watching Yammy Noob. Leave me a comment on this one and that one if you don't mind. Let me know if you liked it or hated it, and then uh, maybe we can make the videos better. Keep improving, right?